our full-time RVers. We have a three-year-old toddler, um, and yeah, we live full-time in our 23 to 24-foot RV. Um, I'm going to answer and discuss our most frequently asked questions, and it's all while we're riding in our RV, so if you hear craziness, that's what it is. Um, my husband is driving. I'll give you a little show. There's my toddler, my husband, stuff falling in the bathroom. This is normal. Literally, there are some moments where I'm like, our home is literally in shambles from just like the bumps, the speed bumps, the turns, but it's okay. They just put it back together, right? Okay. I don't know what you can see in my glasses. I'm trying to see that too. But I'm going to start off. And if I miss something, you have other questions, feel free to leave them down below. Um, I'm going to talk to you about our most frequently asked questions. So a lot of people ask us um, how, so we don't live full time in a spot. We live full time boondocking, which means we don't have hookups. So we don't have electricity 24 seven. We don't have um, running water. We do have running water because we have a fill tank. Uh, we have a 35 gallon tank of water and that's for everything, for flushing the toilet, for washing dishes, for showers, hand washing, toothbrushing, all that stuff. Even an outside shower, um, which is useful when we're at the beach, but in general we don't use it. Would you like some water, buddy? Let me open this side of the window so we can see out on this side too, okay? you can see the ocean. My videos are not very edited because mainly I want to be able to post and I don't have time being a stay-at-home mom of a toddler um, to edit and we don't have wi-fi um, generally ever so it's kind of hard. Um, so I don't share the town that we live in. Oh no! Um, I don't share where exactly we live, but basically we live um, on a program that's a safe parking program that provides us a spot at night from 7 p.m. to 7 a.m. And then my husband works, so we go to his parking lot and hang out there during the day. Arkham and I stay in the van, we go to parks, we walk around the shopping center. So we are not full-time RVers that work online or anything. We just, um, my husband works a traditional job. We're working on it. We're trying to figure out life in general. But our goal was to live in our RV for six months and um, reevaluate after that if it's working for us. And honestly, there are moments where we're like, we are done. We want a washer and dryer. We're exhausted from driving around all the time. So if you're stationary, you're not driving around all the time. But for us, we're not stationary. So we're always driving from one place to another. If it's too early to go to our spot, we might have to go somewhere else. It's really hard. If you are a single individual or a couple that don't have children, I highly recommend looking into sprinter vans because they're just so sleek and they fit everywhere. We looked at a couple sprinter vans and it just was not um, possible for us because we have a toddler, we're gonna be trying for another one. So it's just not really possible for us. There's not enough room in a sprinter. However, there are major benefits to having a sprinter because you can fit in regular parking lots. I always say Google needs to add that to their, um, what well, a yellow one. That was a cool one, I like that one. Um, they need to add that to part of their features of like, is it RV friendly? It was? Cool! Do you want me to hold your cold chocolate for you? Sure. We're headed to Nana's house to go see Side B. So, that's just some basic back information on us. Um, Let's chat about our most frequently asked questions. Um, we dump our like gray water and black water and refill at a gas station. 
50 cents um, to dump and refill. We typically have to do that two to three times a week. So my husband gets two consecutive days off in a row. Oh, that was a cool one. And we usually go somewhere with those two days. Um, we usually book a campground. We try to get hookups, um, but that's not always possible. And we're having a lot of fun. They're a little crazy. Um, going to all the beach campgrounds and everything without hookups, we're able to get spots. But with hookups, it's really hard to get a spot because people are booked like six months in advance. So look, there's the ocean. Um, so yeah, lately we've been just getting spots without um, without hookups, and that's okay. Um, but we just have to make sure we go dump and fill that third time, you know. Um, so that um, we have 35, I think it's like 35 and a half gallons in our tank um, of water, which is under this bed here, this couch bed. And we can check it during the week by just lifting up. Um, there is a monitor above our stove, but those things are never really accurate. And we can kind of tell now that we've lived in our RV for three months, we can kind of tell like, okay, we're getting a little low on water, just like timing wise, or just the way the water's coming out. Um, so we'll get under here and check. Um, and yeah, my husband has to shower every morning before work. So that's our main priority is make sure we have enough water for that. Um, for our own drinking water, we fill up gallons of water. We're looking for a little bit better of a system, but we fill up gallons of water um, probably once a week. Maybe, yeah, usually once in a week we fill up um, our four gallons of water and we keep those in here and then we fill them up as needed. But we go to a water store and it's like 55 cents a gallon. I'm thinking about just getting us a five gallon jug, but it might be a little hard to pour into our water bottles. We'll see. Um, okay, so the next question we get a lot is propane. Is it expensive? Is it scary? A lot of people are intimidated by propane and they feel like it cooks different. We, my whole life we had an electric, or sorry, my whole life we had a gas stove and then when we moved to our apartment for like five or six years we had an electric stove. Um, everything was electric in our apartment because we paid for electricity. And um, I, I like propane way better than electric and it doesn't make a difference for me, like propane versus traditional gas, I, I don't know. Um, it doesn't scare me. It, it, it doesn't, we use cast iron to cook in and nothing in aluminum pans um, if we use the oven, but I like never use the oven because it's too hot in here. So I haven't noticed anything. Um, I've seen a lot of people take them out and put electric ovens in. But here's the issue. We don't have electricity most of the day. The only time we have electricity is for like two to three hours in the evening when we run our generator. So um, that is, you know, I mean, we wouldn't be able to use our oven and that's not practical for us. We don't have a microwave. We're not going to get one. We are going to get a, um, <laughs> We sing an old McDonald. We are going to get a toaster oven. Um, but again, it's not something you can run during the day. So um, we have an Instapot and all that stuff. But we just use that. If we go to like a family member's house, we can use it. Um, and sometimes we fill up our waters at family members' help house, so that's helpful. Um, or water refill stations, you know, like water bottle refills. Um, so the propane is not that expensive. We cook at least two meals a day in here, and I always use the stove. Um, and we pay like $30-ish to refill it to our propane tank and it lasts us like three weeks all the time. So we're coming close to need to refill it. We have never run out cold turkey. Um, but yeah, generally generally it's 30 bucks to fill up and it lasts us three weeks. So that seems pretty efficient for 
us, we haven't had an issue with it. A lot of people have an issue with their kids and the knobs. Um, Arkham's interested in them, he definitely is, but we involve him in cooking and he's aware of the dangers. Obviously he's a little older than like a one year old. Um, but yeah, nothing has ever, we've never had an issue on that. It's kind of hard to light anyways. Um, it's kind of hard to turn those knobs because ours is older. We're thinking about getting a new stove, but I think we're going to upgrade our fridge first because our fridge is pretty big and it works, but there's times where we feel like maybe it's going out. Um, so yeah, we're kind of just keeping our eye on it, making sure our fridge doesn't go out so we don't lose all our food. We stock our fridge, like, I mean, a little less than we average would in an apartment, but, um, it, it works. We use our food for the week and we have some stuff that stays in there like curry paste, chicken broth, you know, that stuff stays in there until it's used and then we buy another one and it's no issues. Still got lots of room. Figure out the room. Um, okay. Um, actual gas. This thing takes actual gas. The generator runs off of our gas. So we can't let ourselves get too low on gas because if we have a quarter tank, our generator will not run. Um, our generator is built, not built in, but you know what I mean? It's right under, It's we have not had to take it out. I know that my husband needs to maintenance it because it seems like it hasn't really been maintenanced um, from the previous owner. So that's on our list, but it's not something we're doing like tonight. Um, there is a thing that tells us how many hours are on our generator, which is very interesting. And yeah, we run our generator for like two to three hours a night. We charge our phones, we charge, um, we have an external power block that charges phones and like could charge a laptop, you know, stuff like that. So we make sure we have that charged just in case. Um, basically, as soon as we pull up to our spot, we pop out our pop out, we um, turn on the generator, and we get everything plugged in that needs to be plugged in. Um, and we also have a little charger right here. Let's see. That charger there is um, a converter or an inverter. Converter or inverter? Okay. It's a um, converter. So yeah, we have a, um, a power converter or whatever. Um, can't even read it. 12 volt to 110 slash 130 volt power inverter. I can't read. Anyways, um, we have that thing that if we need to in a pinch plug a phone in to charge, plug a laptop in to charge, it won't power everything. We do have a TV that we turn on um, in the evenings to watch like a movie or something. We don't always turn it on, but we have that option. It has a built-in DVD player. It's not the best TV. I wouldn't recommend it to anyone. It's hard to find TVs with DVD inset. Um, and we just wanted that because we don't have Wi-Fi. We don't have constant power for our phones. But we end up using our old phones. Um, both my husband and I had upgraded our phones like within the last year. So we keep our old phones charged as well. And we have movies downloaded on them for us and for him. But mainly like, you know, we usually watch one movie in the evening a few times a week and we don't watch TV during the day that's a benefit is that we really don't have technology to watch during the day which is awesome we usually listen to podcasts we're outside we were always outside anyways um at our apartment my little guy and I so it's just a different environment you know um okay so gas I don't know how big our gas tank is how big is our gas tank how big is our gas tank? So 30 to 40 gallons is our gas tank. On average to fill up from pretty close to empty, it's about 260 right now. Obviously that varies with gas prices. So 250, my husband is saying when it's completely empty. It does last us pretty long. We usually do well. I mean, we have to drive everywhere. Yeah, it depends on how much driving. But usually our gas, if we're staying in local in town, our gas will last us probably about two weeks. Yeah, I give or take about two weeks. Yeah, and that's with us running a, a white bag. Awesome. Oh, that's a horse trailer. Look at that.
at horsies. There were horsies riding in there. Um, so yeah, if we're staying local in town, it lasts us about two weeks. Um, and that's with running our generator two to three hours a night. Um, oh, yeah, it just comes down to how much you drive. Um, and I mean, otherwise it lasts us like a week. And like I said, we always make sure that we do have like a half tank because once we start to get lower, our generator won't run. Not the biggest deal, but sometimes you just want to make sure you've got it if you need it. Um, yeah, I think those are our most frequently asked questions. I know I kind of babbled a lot, but I hope that all of that made sense. And this is stuff like, honestly, we were both brand new to RV when we started this. I had been in an RV a couple times in my life, but I knew nothing about them. They were like my grandparents, like great grandparents RV or like aunts and uncles that like once a year we could ride in the RV and I would just like stand in the middle and surf. I was probably like seven and I don't remember how to use a toilet, how to use anything in there. So um, the last question I'll address is do we treat um, anything in the black tank? So a lot of people put like treatments or deodoriters and stuff like that. We haven't dealt with odor. We did have one incident where we didn't empty the tank good enough. And we did have like, we left the dump station. We were like, oh my God, it smells so bad. We can't handle it, go back. So we went back and we have this crazy hose thing. I will link it down below because I don't know what it's called. We just call it the crazy hose. And it literally goes in, it's connected to water and it just cleans it all out. Um, so, that is super helpful and that helps us from having to use any chemicals. We're pretty natural, we're kind of naturalists. And so I usually I will put, we buy the big jugs of white vinegar. So usually I'll put like some white vinegar and baking soda down there. We use vinegar for everything. Um, so that's our main thing if we're gonna use a treatment. But mainly we just um, clean it out every other time we use that crazy hose at the um, place and then we put some vinegar and baking soda down there and we're good so i hope this has been helpful we're still um, learning so let us know if you have other questions if you're looking to get into the rv life let us know i'm so curious um but yeah push subscribe and hit that bell so you know when we post i usually try to post once a week on saturdays just depends this one is obviously an off but I hope this has been helpful and informational and yeah, we'll see you in the next one. Bye guys. <laughs>